Hey, what is up, mortals? It is Jace here with a new video for you. Welcome to part 8 of Deku the Shield Hero. I just wanted to greet you guys by just saying sit back and relax. You're in for a treat. So, we begin. Welcome back, young heroes. The booming voice of All Might echoed through the large observation room where all of the students from 1A were now gathered. Well, all the students minus one, that is. Izuku, Raftalia, and Ida were now standing off to the side, all of them looking a little beaten around the edges, but nothing more. As for Bakugo, the explosive teen had been taken to the nurse's office, just like All Might had said. The hero team of the exercise looked on at their classmates who stood in the center of the room, both appearing a little embarrassed as all the eyes were on them. Ida, on the other hand, had his head hung low in defeat. As for All Might, the giant of a man stood with his back facing a large screen that was replaying the fight. Well now, that was a real intense first match. It got me all revved up. Now, can anyone tell me who was the MVP of this exercise? At once, several students began talking about their thoughts. A few like Hiroshima, Sato, and Sero all said that Raftalia should be named the MVP. Not just because she was the one who touched the bomb to win, but also for her impressive strength and speed. But there were also a few like Ojiro, Ashiro, and Kaminari, who said that Izuku was hands down the MVP, since, well, he was the one who trapped Ida between the two shields and contained the massive explosives. Then, Asui raised a hand. I have a question for you, Midoriya. Why did you trap Bakugo in that prison? Ribbit. Couldn't you just use it on your team and protect yourself better? Izuku blinked before scratching the back of his head, a crestfallen expression on his face. You're right. I, I, I could have done that. It might have even held up to Kachan's explosive. I could have even reinforced my defenses with an airstrike shield and a second shield just to be on the safe side. But when I heard about how those gauntlets were storing up his sweat, I was worried about how much damage it would cause. The floors and the ceiling could have collapsed. And if there was a gas pipe in the building, or if that bomb had been real... Izuku's words trailed off. A shudder ran through his body, while barely noticing that Asui was nodding and understanding. As he had been talking, the images of himself, Raftalia, Kachan, and even Ida, buried under rubble waiting for the class to dig them out, flashed through his mind. He might have been able to protect him and his partner, but the rest? He really didn't like to think about it. And when he looked up at the rest of the class, he could see that their expressions had changed as well. While the talks about who was the MVP of the match had been lighthearted and upbeat, now their faces all seemed to pale. Then. Yayorotsu spoke up. I believe that assessment is correct. Treating this exercise as if it were a real-life situation is the correct mindset to have. However, even if we remove the possibility of a gas line rupture, had the building's structure been damaged by Bakugo's explosion and the bomb gone off, there's no telling how widespread the damage would have been. Not only would the heroes and villains would have been injured or killed, but so would countless civilians. With that said, the hero team as a whole should be considered the MVP. Both made good use of their tight space of the hallways provided, using their quirks to manipulate the area and deal with their foes. They also took advantage of the villain's lack of teamwork. Yayorotsu then looked over at Ida. As for the villain team, however, Bakugo was a loose cannon. He went off on his own, refusing to work with his teammate while trying to take on two heroes alone. And they worked as a team. Their combined speed and strength would have overpowered the heroes. And while his quirk is powerful, Bakugo was overall blind to his team's objective. Even if he hadn't caused the detonation of the warhead, at worst he would have destroyed their base of operations or alerted more heroes to the scene. In short, he was reckless. In contrast, Ida remained focused. Rather than chasing after Bakugo, he stayed with the warhead to guard it. He even created a crude method to detect any attempt by Raftalia to sneak in. All Might, for his part, looked at the dark-haired girl with something akin to surprise, but that only lasted for a moment before he burst out laughing. <laughs> Very good, young Yao Yorotsu. Very good. However, I would like to add that the hero team had made more of an effort to capture young Bakugo with the capture tape I gave them. They could have avoided the nasty explosion. Also, young Ida could have relaxed a bit more and not fallen for such an obvious ploy. 
Then again, given the nature of young Raftalia's quirk, there was an obvious choice that she was. In fact, right behind him. So I will not fault him for that. The number one hero then turned to look at the three students, each of them looking back at him expectedly. I hope all of you take these comments to head. Remember, whether you win or lose, there is always something that you can take from the experience. That is, as long as you're willing to learn from it, and that will go for the rest of you moving forward. Remember, being a true hero means that you are constantly improving in order to combat the forces of villainy. Izuku beamed at the words as the mighty man that was All Might flashed them with a smile and gave them a thumbs up. Glancing to his side, he could see that Raftalia was also smiling, while Ida looked moved to tears. Now then, as for the MVP, I believe that... What is going on down there? The entire class, minus All Might, jumped as the face of the former healing heroine, Recovery Girl, appeared on the large screen, taking up most of it. They all stood there, staring as the elder woman's face was turning red right before their eyes as she glared down at the back of their teacher. Speaking of All Might, his body seemed to shake and quiver slightly under the woman's gaze as he slowly, very slowly, turned to look at her. Ah, recovery girl. I'm in the middle of class right now, so... The first day? Your first day of teaching and I already have a student in the infirmary in serious condition! Burns across his body, broken bones, loss of blood. That boy is going to have to spend the night here at school while I use my quirk on him. He's just lucky that some form of healing was already in the works. But that I'll have to look into later. What were you thinking of letting him go out there with such dangerous support? Well, answer me! Well, uh... This older woman just let out a growl of frustration as All Might stood there in silence. For the rest of the class, everyone gave it their all, but did their best not to go too overboard as none of the students in Class 1A wanted to be on the bad side of Recovery Girl right now. Or ever, for that matter. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN allows you to change your IP address, making it harder to track and securing your privacy. In addition to providing safe passage through the web, you can also expand the reach of your favorite streaming services, like Disney+. If you are from the United States, you won't be able to watch any of the MCU or Sony Spider-Man movies. But by switching your location to Japan, you can access them whenever you want. Check out the link in the description to get three extra months when you purchase the 12-month subscription plan that costs $99 a year. This deal is for a limited time, and thanks to ExpressVPN for sponsoring the video. Good morning, class. Those dull words were the first thing Mr. Aizawa said the next day. Having finally made his way past all the reporters standing outside the school, those reporters had been there since early morning, pestering everyone who tried to enter the school in the hopes of getting something on how All Might's career as a teacher was going. Thankfully, none of them could get into the building thanks to security. But at the same time, it was a headache and a waste of time. How that man or any of the other pros dealt with the press was a mystery to the dark-haired man. As he walked to his desk, a stack of paper under one of his arms, he could hear the rustling of feet as some of his students made a quick dash towards their desk. Only briefly did he glance towards the rest of the classroom, thankful that everyone was here, not held up by the press. Once he was in front of the room, the tired teacher's eyes fell on one student in particular, Bakugo. The hot-headed teen was still having some bandages wrapped around his body, courtesy of Recovery Girl making him look like a half-finished mummy. A step up from last night when he had gone to visit his student, handing him a flash drive containing recordings of all the matches he had missed due to his injuries. His words to Bakugo were simple. Watch everything he had missed, as well as his own fight and be ready to discuss them for the next day. After getting some form of acknowledgement that the boy heard him, Aizawa had gone to talk with Recovery Girl to both ask if she could supply him with a laptop to watch everything as well as to seek assistances and assurances that Bakugo would be ready for his classes the next day. The old woman had been annoyed by the speed that Aizawa wished for his student's recovery, but still assured that the tired teacher that she would be able to make for the classroom. However, that was all she could promise. Due to the extent of the injuries, she would need to administer her quirk on him at least three more times the next day before the start of class, after lunch, and after school. 
Only after that, he would be completely healed and ready to do more physical training. I reviewed the footage from yesterday's matches, Midoriya. Raftalia, I understand that the teams were picked at random, but All Might should have made an exception for the both of you. The two of you need to learn how to work with the rest of your classmates. With that said, I am pleased to see how much the two of you have improved since the entrance exam. The two young heroes voiced their thanks while saying that they would make an effort as he asked. After nodding, Mr. Aizawa then turned his gaze towards the rest of the classroom. As for the rest of the class, some of you worked decently well. Shiro, Kaminari, from what I could tell, you both made good use of your prep time to figure out duties and came up with a plan. Neither of you were as in sync as Midoriya and Raftalia's team. But seeing as this was your first time working together, you both did well. As for the rest of you, your ability to work in teams needs work. We'll talk about it more in depth later today. But there are a few of you I'd like to bring up now. Todoroki, while it was impressive that you can use your ice to immobilize everyone in the building like that, it came at the cost of the point of the exercise. You need to learn to rely on your fellow heroes. There will be times where you cannot rely on tricks like that. Mineta, you barely did anything other than staring at Yaoyorotsu's chest and rear. If I see that again, you will be lucky to get sent to general studies and barred from ever returning to the hero track. And Bakugo? As Mr. Aizawa's eyes moved from the horrified expression of the gray-paired youth to Bakugo's, a wave of annoyance washed over him. Bakugo, who had been staring at the desk, looked up with a sour look on his face. I double-checked our records and it confirmed that you and Midoriya went to the same middle school. That, as well as what I saw in the footage, showed that Midoriya knew how you fought and knew what to expect up until the near end when you use your support gear against him. You didn't take that into account, nor did you factor the strength of his quirk. Instead, you rushed in, thinking you could just destroy whatever stood in your way with an explosion. There was a short pause in the man's speech. The man's tired eyes focusing on the blonde who began to look more and more agitated. I won't deny that your quirk is strong and that you have great talent, but that will only get you so far. You need to stop looking down on everyone else, or else that arrogance of yours will be your undoing, and may even lead you to an early grave. With that said, Aizawa let out a sigh. Now, as much as I'd like to start going over the lesson in full, there is something that cannot be put off any longer, something that may affect you for the rest of your lives, picking class representatives. I don't care how you do it, just don't take up too much time, or wake me up until you're done. With that, Aizawa pulled out his sleeping bag, crawled into it, and went to sleep. Once the class could hear their teacher snoring, a loud commotion broke out as everyone wanted the drink. Not because they wanted the extra work, but because it would help you get scouted by hero agencies and shows that you know how to lead a team. Everyone was just throwing out sales pitches over each other. Yaoyorosu claimed that she would be best due to her high performance and grades. Ashido claimed she'd keep things chill and make the class more friendly. Then there was Mineta, claiming that he would work to have the girl's uniform becoming more revealing. This comment caused the room to grow silent as all the girls in the room turned to glare at him with frosty expressions. That would have put out all the Endeavor's flames for life. Bakugo just yelled at everyone to pick him or he'd kill them all. After a few minutes of this, Ida stood up while slamming the palms of his hands onto the table. This is no way for UA students to be behaving. I say that the best way to decide who shall be our class representatives is to do so fairly with an election. Yeah. But won't everyone just vote for themselves? Ribbit. Izuku found himself nodding at Asui's words, finding that they had merit. Ida tried to justify his stance, claiming that whoever did get more than one vote would just prove how they were ready for the lead. But for Izuku, it was a hard sell as everyone wanted the job for themselves. Maybe one person might get more than one vote, but two might be pushing it. And if everyone did vote for themselves, they would just waste time doing this all over again. Though it wasn't like they had any ideas. So, I think Asui has a point. Tell me, Sue. Ibit. Oh, all right. I think Sue has a point about everyone voting for themselves. So how about we just lay down a single rule? No one is allowed to vote for themselves. The class thought about it for a moment, before slowly, one by one, they began to voice their agreement. Well, all but two. Ida, who was upset that his impassioned reasoning was being disregarded. And Bakugo, well, because Bakugo. I don't know any of these extras' names. From there, things went remarkably smoothly. 
Everyone took out a piece of paper, quickly writing on it before depositing it on Mr. Aizawa's desk. Once all the votes had been turned in, they were counted by several students, with the names and numbers of votes written on the board. Very soon, it became clear that Asui had become the class representative. While the frog-like girl's face didn't show it, she did tilt her head while pointing herself in confusion. And soon after that, Izuku found himself winning the vice representative role by a single vote. Me? Congratulations, Izuku! Hey, how come I didn't get any votes? Yeah, same with me! At that, most of the class gave the gray pair teen and the walking explosion a look that screamed, Seriously? How are the two of you surprised? Not long after that, Izuku found himself sitting in the cafeteria, still a little surprised about how their class election had turned out. Sitting next to him on his right was Raftalia, with Sue following right behind her and sitting to Izuku's left a few moments later. They were also joined by two other students, Uraraka and Kirishima, both of them sitting directly opposite of Izuku. This still feels unreal. I never thought I'd get that many votes. To be perfectly honest, I voted for you, Ribbit. You did? Izuku turned to look at his classmate in surprise, watching her nod by pressing one of her fingers up against her lower lip. You were the only one who agreed with me about the problem with voting, at least out loud. And you came up with a good solution, Ribbit. Also, I was impressed with how quickly you thought about all the damages Bakugo could have done and moved to act. Izuku smiled at that before taking a quick bite out of his food. Thanks, Sue. That means a lot. And honestly, I'm glad that you got the job of class rep. I think a good leader needs to ask questions and point out flaws when other people make suggestions. It's not easy. But someone has to do it. And you just seemed very calm and collected. That's why I voted for you. While Sue's expression didn't change, Izuku could see the grateful look in her eyes right before she nodded her head. Thanks, Ribbit. From there, the group got to talking about who voted for who. No one was really surprised that Raftalia voted for Izuku, saying that he was really reliable. Though the young shield user was a bit surprised when Kirishima agreed with her, that the way he cared for Bakugo after the fight was super manly. I also know that Kaminari voted for you too. Said he likes the idea of having someone in charge who can cage up Bakugo. Whenever he gets out of hand, at least. But be careful. That guy wants you to start calling that move Shield Timeout. <laughs> <laughs> that got a good laugh out of Midoriya, as well as the others at the table. The image of an enraged Bakugo slamming his fist against the shield prison walls as everyone else carried on with the class like nothing happened was all too hilarious. I, well, voted for Raftalia. Don't get me wrong. I think Asui and Midoriya are good choices as well. I just thought that after seeing her fight with her sword like that, she looked really cool. That got a blush from Raftalia. However, before she could say anything, an alarm began to sound, creating panic throughout the school. Thank you all for sticking around, and I hope that you enjoyed. Before you leave, we would just like to let you know that we, the Celestials, have many other channels for your entertainment and viewing purposes. All the information you need is right below here in the description. So feel free to check out all the other incredible projects our team creates. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. Their details will be in the description down below. That's all for today's video, so goodbye and have a divine day.